Hello, hello, hello. Today is May 26, 2021. And as you will see, I will work out the solutions with you of my problem 110. I already recorded that a few days ago. Before I continue, many of my viewers used Kepler's law to solve. There is no problem with that. Kepler's four laws are truly fantastic, given the fact that they were published more than 50 years before Newton came with his theory of gravity. I never used Kepler's four laws because for me it's easier to only remember Newton's law of gravity and all the rest follows from that. So you will see in my solutions that I only use Newton's law of gravity. But that doesn't mean that the problem could not be solved with Kepler's laws. Okay, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Today is Monday, May 24, 2021. <laughs> I'm going to Solve for you problem 110. I may not post it until maybe three or four days from now, but I will not be home then, so I have to record it now. Elliptical orbit. I hope all of you have again watched my lecture number 22 of 801. That tells it all. That tells it all for problem 109, <laughs> but also for 110. Okay, you ready? Here's the Earth, and there is a satellite which has this mass in elliptical orbit around the Earth. The closest distance between the satellite and the Earth, which we call perigee, is four times the radius of the Earth. And this is the radius of the Earth. Four times this is this. Here is apogee. And in apogee it has a velocity v apogee, which is less than this one. That was all part of problem 109. Now the question is, what is the orbital period of this satellite? In this orbit, or in this one, of course. All right, now let's look here. Concentrate for now only on this circular orbit around the Earth. And the circular orbit has radius r. So from here to here, the diameter of that circle is 2r. It is utterly trivial, and I will not do that now. Certainly, Easier even than high school problem. No, not easier, but any high school student should be able to do that. For a circular orbit, to show that the total energy of the circular orbit is minus little m, capital M, which is the mass of the Earth, 
gravitational constant G divided by 2R. It is also utterly trivial, also clearly high school problem, that for a circular orbit, the square of the period, the time to go around, is this, 4 pi squared r to the third divided by mg. Now comes so, something of this kind of a miracle, and it is by no means obvious. If you change in these equations capital R by A, then you find the total energy and the T square for orbital trajectories for which A is half the distance between perigee and apogee. That is by no means obvious. So all you have to do is replace this by an A and replace this by an A and then you would have the total energy and you would have the orbital period. It is not at all obvious and most physics books mention it but don't prove it. I also, in my lecture 22 of 801, I also mention it, but don't prove it. And the reason why most books don't prove it, and I didn't prove it, that it becomes mathematical a little bit of a headache. You have to deal with ellipticities, and I wanted to stay away from that in my lecture 22. However, if you are interested in proving it, you will find it in Tony French's book, which is called Newtonian Mechanics. It is in chapter 13. Once you accept that t squared of this orbit is 4 pi r squared r to the third, and you replace the r by a. a is half the distance ap. It's called the semi major axis. Major axis would be 2a, semi major axis is a. So from here to here is 2a, half of that is a. So if you put the a in that equation, out pops immediately the T. So the only question remains then, what is A for this ellipse? Totally remarkable, before we go ahead, is that any ellipse around the Earth Any that has the same 2a as any other, they have the same e total and they have the same t, t squared. What that means is that this orbital period is the same as this orbital period. Because you should notice that this distance here is the same as this distance here. And the same is true for this elliptical orbit, because this distance here is the same as this distance here. I have carefully, of course, measured it. That is not at all intuitive, but it's true. So you can draw 20 different ellipses around the Earth in any direction you want to. If you all give them the same A, that means not all have the same ellipticity, but they have the same A, the orbital period is the same, and the energy is the same. So, all you would have to know now, what for this orbit A is. 
Well, I solved that in problem 109. A is half AP, and I derived there that it is 6.377 times 10 to the 7 meters. This is meters. This is not the mass of the satellite. So, you pop that A in here, and you immediately find T squared, and you find T. So the orbital period, the time, is 1.603 times 10 to the 5 seconds, which is 1.855 days. Um, the good news is that about half of my viewers have the right answer, which was not the case for 109. About half. Others, some I should say, have a totally absurd number. I mean, you don't have to have a PhD in physics to immediately see that it has to be wrong. One person finds that the orbital period is seven seconds. Don't you know that the orbital period of any satellite near Earth, like the International Space Station is about 90 minutes. <laughs> so this one will take only 7 seconds. Someone else has 300 years. That is also bizarre because the Moon, which is at a distance of about 60 Earth radii from Earth, takes 20 seven days to go around the Earth. This orbit, which is much smaller, <laughs> takes several hundred years. So a little bit of proper thinking should tell you that those answers are wrong. All right, so it is 1.855 days. If you didn't get it right or if you couldn't solve the problem, don't feel bad. What perhaps is more important than anything, that we will remain friends. And as I have said earlier, the strongest conservation rule in physics is not the conservation of energy, but it is the conservation of being friends with you. That is the most holy conservation rule. Have a nice day and take care.